differentiate the two. So I, I'm going to explain. Um, so I'm trying to use the same story, true story. So <clears throat> we'll see if it if it works. So yeah, let me, okay, otherwise it doesn't look, it must look professional, they say so, okay. So, so this is t-test, t-test whereby we, <clears throat> we compare two group means. Uh, usually in an experiment, uh, we can compare the, the condition, the treatment condition, or before and after, or maybe just two treatment conditions, or we can compare two groups. So let's just stay, let's just say conditions, because just like what I said, before just a fiction story, let's assume that <clears throat> my we allow to we col we do we collect data on a sample of children watching the movie alone, and then we we so we're manipulating watching of the movie, watching the movie alone, and then watching the same movie when accompanied by a parent or by a parent or a guardian. So so it's an independent t-test whereby we use two. On two of the or two of those conditions, we use two different samples. So other children they watch maybe they're eleven, and then we select other children they watch the same movie, and then repeated measure. So the advantages and disadvantages of 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 doing the two, we'll do that as we move forward. Maybe in other videos. So the repeated measure we use the same children they watch finding Dory alone, and then we measure anxiety and then. After a day or two or same day, they watch the movie. I don't know if it's ethical though. So let's ignore that for now. So they watch the movie with the parent or a guardian or whoever, as they say. Yeah. Parental guidance, like the Disney guy says. So I'm going to show you how to do that's what is important. So the outcome is just to encourage you guys. Uh, don't be scared if you see the word statistics. So this, these videos are focused on Excel, but I've, I'm going to do another set of videos where I'm going to show you how to do that manually, those calculations and formulas. So I'm going to share a screen with you. So bear with me. So what did I do here? Okay. Sorry. I want to share a screen with you. Okay. So this is also another Fiction. So we like to compare, like what I said, yeah, this and that. So I think this is making sense to you. So these watching, I think this is distracting me. Let's, let me just delete this. Can I delete this? Because we, we did that already. Okay. So we, we are together in this. <laughs> Don't leave me alone. Uh, so, so I, this, like, don't. This was not a study. Um, what I want to is for you to understand. So two samples, independent samples, independent observations. Let's ignore for now the assumptions that there must be normality of distribution or sampling distribution, other life, something like that. Also, I encourage you to read um, central limit theorem. What is it? What does it tell? What, how does it help us? So it's encouraged also to have a bigger sample so that we have normal distribution uh, the sampling distribution. So the distribution depends on, on what uh, analysis are you running. If it's for ANOVA, it's something else. If it's for correlation, something else. So it depends. Let's not talk about that for now. I don't want to confuse you. So you, you do the same. You go to data. Uh, so this for independent uh, t-test, the first phase. I'm going to do the dependent. So you go to data analysis. <clears throat> um, so OK, I didn't introduce myself. My name is Chablan Chitanga. Uh, who am I again? Yeah. I don't know, sometimes it's difficult to identify yourself. Um, too simple, assuming, okay. Let's, let's, what did I say I'm gonna start with? Okay, the, the independent one. So usually we assume that the variance is, 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 is equal. So they usually we run what you call a Levin test to see that is the variance coming, is it equal across the samples? Is the, so the, we, may, we test for homogeneous of variance. So 
we use a Levin test to do that. So read about that. What is a Levin test? So if it's in significance, this means that um, the variances are there's no significant difference between the variances. So if it's not significant, it's other way around. So we assume that there's equal variances. Uh, so that's why we 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 select randomly. We select a random. We do random selection of participants so that we want to control for these and something like that. But I, I argue about that in Africa, especially because of a diverse population. Okay, let me let me stick to what I want to do. So if you assume unequal variances, of which you don't intend to, you select this one. But let's use this one. In the output, especially SPSS, you get the two outputs for unequal and unequal um, um, variances. So if uh, the homogeneous, um, if there's heterogeneous, you, you, you use this one. So if there's viol violation, you, you, you use this one. But if there's no violation, uh, you use this one. OK, so we click on OK. <coughs> So this so variable range is alone. We, sorry, 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 guys. We explain. So the case I make sure your case size is, is in there. So you, you click and drag down and release. And then number two. Why I'm why I'm doing this, I must explain that you see that sometimes the T statistic is um can be negative or positive, doesn't matter. What it means that sometimes if you put the account on the other side or along the other side, it will be positive or negative. So it doesn't matter. What we want is to compare the the the, the, the means and the variance of what's happening. And then the labels were included. And then the hypothesized mean difference is zero here because we hypothesize there's no significant difference between the two two conditions. So that's the hypothesis. There's no difference because the the samples are coming from the same population. So this alpha level also is similar to that confidence level of 95% confidence. So we are giving like 5% leeway for that the unsystematic variance that cannot be explained. Okay, let's move forward. Okay. So this is the output for that. It's quick and it's kind of easy. I mustn't be quiet. I'm thinking what to say. No, I don't want to say things that are not related to <clears throat> except that my colleagues are not here and I'm happy. Um okay, the same two decimal places and So this is quite quick. So even if you do this manually, you're going to get the mean for the alone group condition, let's say condition is 6.55. And then the mean for the other group is this one. And then the variance uh, is um, 3.87. And then the variance for this is also 4 point. You must also read the variance standard deviation. So standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So it's trying to standardize across whatever other samples that can come. So the observations, actually the number of the size of the sample, that's 11 and, 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 and 11 there. And then the put variance. So you see that with independent uh, t-test, there's a put variance because they're trying to put the variance together. Otherwise, if you do it differently, there's a term that they use. It can, it can make it large, so it's, it's combined like this. So we co we'll explain if, and as I explain, the output um, combined together, and then like what said, we say it's zero here. So because you're saying it mustn't be different because it's coming from the same population, and then the degrees of freedom here form for independent t tests. That's a major difference uh, with dependent t tests. So it's usually um, n n one. N1 subscript plus N2 subscript minus two. Or some people like to write it because of freedom is equal to uh, in sometimes in bracket N minus one because sample size can be different sometimes. But it's encouraged to have a sample size that is 
uh, very, sorry, that is of, that are of similar or of same sizes because it can affect um, the variance and other stuff, the power in, how can you explain? So that's where this is coming from. So if you say, if, if you say 11 minus one is 10, and then 11 minus one, that's 10. That's where this degrees of freedom is coming from. I'm going to explain another video what is degrees of freedom. And then it's also the same, but the danger of this one is when the is not, uh, the same n minus two only sometimes. So, but let's move forward. So what we are looking for is this one. So we, this the, our T statistic, but doesn't tell us much. What we want is, we want to know if it's significant or not. And then you see that there's almost kind of a confusion here in terms of there's one tail and two tails. So the two tails where, whereby the, the difference is specified. Before you conduct a research study, you said um, the, the children who watch the movie alone are going to be more anxious than those who watch the movie on a camera. So it's this direction. So if direction, you use one tail. So use this one. And, but if it's, you didn't specify the direction, you use two tail. You just say there's a significant difference mm -hmm. between the two groups. So you, in that, you use um, the two tail. So don't report on both. So usually we, we as in researchers or statistics, there's an assumption that we, we usually use two. But if they, you specify, but there are dangers around specification because there's a balance between type one error and type two error. So you can read around that. But let's assume that we're using the two tailed, okay. Let me do this. So, so, so this is, this is what, okay, I'm getting this notification, I don't like that. So this is what we are looking for. So this is the T statistic, and then is it significant or is it not significant? Um, so this is the critical value for, if you look at the back of your textbook, this is the value that you get. So this is the figure that is very important in our output. Is it significant or is it not? Uh, because we say in my, we are at 0 0.05 uh, alpha level. So if it's more than that, there's no significant difference. If it's less than that, there is a significant difference. So in this one, it is more than 0 0.05. So there's no significant difference between these two. The, between these two treatment conditions. That's that's the test, that's independent test, okay. So this number doesn't tell us much, but this is what is important. Yes, we can see there's a difference between these two means, but is it a significant difference? So if you're doing, okay, I will show you when I do it manually, way that bell shape and then rejection area and then non-rejection area, okay. This is what, it, yeah, let's, let's stop here. Uh, I think let me separate these videos in there and I'll do the other one on its own, the dependent t-test. Thank you so much.